Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. I'm in the middle of a five-speed manual swap in my E46 BMW and I am ready to put the transmission back in. So that's what this video is gonna be about. We're gonna throw the transmission back in, put everything back together and start her up, see if it all works. So let's get started. So guys, I wanted you to see how I had my transmission set up on my transmission jack. As you can see, I've got it balanced on this little piece down here on the back of the transmission, and then I had to stick a piece of wood under the front, otherwise it would just be down too far. And when I tilted the table to try to get it up into place, the transmission wouldn't tilt up quite far enough. So you have to try to get it as level as possible. The big problem with this is that it's, it does not want to sit straight up like this. It wants to topple over onto its side. Luckily, I've got the car sort of jacked up high enough with those six ton jack stands that this transmission, the way it's poised on this jack, can slip right under the car just barely this way. Uh, the automatic transmission was not quite the same because that had a pan that it was sitting on and then the bell housing would stick up proud of the pan. You can see how the bell housing is a couple of inches off, you know, sitting a couple inches off the cardboard. Whereas, you know, this transmission here, this one just sits right on the, on the bottom of the bell housing and then it, it tapers up over here. So there's no big pan for it to sit on. So because of that, I made this one is just able to clear it. There's just enough room for this one to sneak in and, and basically no more. So this is how I'm doing it. I got the chain over it so that it won't fall over uh, because that's definitely a concern. And yeah, I'm gonna put it in this way. I should have enough control this way. I was contemplating having the transmission facing the other way, but I think I would ultimately rather have uh, the control of doing it this way. And uh, you know, this the, the arm is long enough to reach from either side. So yeah, this is the way I'm doing it. You know what guys, I think I've noticed a problem here. I think this collar, this was supposed, this is supposed to be, get stuck in the engine. And I believe that I already have the two collars um, actually stuck in my engine. So if I had gone and tried to install this, it wouldn't have wanted to go in. So good thing, good catch. You want to check, check both of those. Make sure your collars are out of the transmission side, make sure they're in the engine side. Also, I'm gonna make sure I don't have any problems with this uh, starter. That usually gives me difficulty. Uh, one thing you wanna do, you wanna clean out this, this uh, guide pin right here. Then you also wanna put a little bit of a chamfer on the edge, that could not hurt. Just take a file and just kinda go around the edges and make a little, make a little chamfer on those edges. That way, you know, it just kinda slips right into the, the starter there. I'm also going to go up and see if I can push the starter back just a little bit, make, sh make extra sure that it doesn't interfere with anything. All right, guys, what I've done is I've reached up in there and I've unbolted that vacuum canister and just sort of shoved it up to the side. This way I should be able to get a hand up in here and sort of push on the starter, help, uh, help get that starter up into place when the time comes. There are lots of things in the way. Uh, you're only gonna have that vacuum reservoir if you have a 330 or a, uh, a 325 with an M56 engine because you've got that little exhaust flap. That's what that vacuum canister's for. It's restoring vacuum to activate that exhaust flap. And it's just right there. And I'm just kind of manipulating it and moving it away and back so that I can sort of get up at the starter somehow, some way, and uh, be able to move it and push it into place. Cause that's, uh, that's gonna be critical. If, if you're not able to get a hand on the starter and move it around and such, you're gonna have a really difficult time getting it on. And in fact, some, some of the times that I've done this, I've, I've gotten so frustrated that I've just, you know, I've just pulled off the intake manifold just to make it easier, just so I can see the starter, just get it the hell out of the way get the transmission on cleanly, and then put the starter back in the way it's supposed to go. Which I may or may not do, depending on how this goes. All right, I'm not exactly which side of this I should be on, the front or the back. My instinct says the back because I'm gonna have to sort of shake and shimmy the transmission once it's uh, sort of up into place. 
I think I might have a little more control over it, ultimately. It's just about a quarter inch that we need to go, and I'm wondering if that starter is being a problem. Okay, now I can actually move the starter myself. So I think that that's fine. And I think I need to get around to the back of it to really push it and get it in there. First of all, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take the chain off because I think that's sort of interfering a little. because it ultimately did shift off my, my jack a little. Okay. There we go. So sort of in the end, the jack started to become a little bit of a problem like I almost, I almost wanted it to drop out of the way once I sort of had the transmission slipped up on and you know I rotated the back end to make sure that the input shaft was uh, able to engage in the splines of the clutch that's why you want to make sure it's in gear by the way if I didn't mention that just shove your gear selector all the way forward <clears throat> that way when you rotate the output shaft the input shaft also turns and then it slots in in the correct position into the clutch disc because remember that clutch disc is held is being sandwiched right now by the the pressure plate so the clutch disc doesn't have any free play it can't move so you're going to have to move in order to slide into it once you're slid in there and you're sort of you know several things are engaged together the transmission doesn't really want to fall down so um <clears throat> it's kind of safe at that point to remove the jack and then get up under it and just sort of do one of these and just kind of wiggle it around several places and kind of get it slipped on. So these are the old lower bolts for the old transmission. These are the new lower bolts for the manual transmission. They're a little bit longer. All the other ones are the same, but the lower bolts that go on either side, longer. Okay, now that thing's up there safely, it's not gonna fall. So here we are looking at the underside of the engine and transmission. This really is supposed to be the bottom of the whole unit. Again, the, the engine is tilted on its side, right? So this would be the actual direct bottom. You see that uh, the E10s go along the bottom and then the long E14s go on the sides those are going to be the lowest bolts main bolts for the engine itself and then just up top we've got those two shorter e14s that go into the top of the engine and then you've got the e12s that go into the starter right next to it Torque to factory spec. That one's not torque to factory spec yet. Not going to be able to really, but um, yeah, you can see that uh, it's so much better. It's, you have so much more access for this once you have the engine mounts off and you know the engine's just hanging down like that. So much nicer. So guys, amazingly. I've been able to reach up with my hand on this side, basically get a hold of the starter and then reach in through over top of the transmission with my left hand. Get so I've got both of my hands up in there and feel, I, I was able to feel with my left 
finger, I was able to feel the pin on the transmission. With my right finger, I was able to feel the hole on the starter. So I could kind of line them up and see where they needed to go. And then I can just push it on. And now it looks like it's on and I can just stick the bolts in and draw it up and be done. So there's a little shot of what that looks like. I hope you can see it because I can't see what you can see. But yeah, uh, over on the left, that's where the two starter bolts go. Those are the E12s. Then over on the right, that's where the E14s go. You may or may not be able to see both of them. I might have to move the engine slightly over to the left. But yeah, I'm gonna go put those bolts on and torque them. So I'm just putting on that rightmost starter bolt. That should be drawing the starter up close to the transmission. Feels like it's going on fine. Since I heard the slightest little pop there, I want to make sure the other side is drawn evenly down on. Let's see if we can go by hand with this. Yeah. Okay. Come back and double check the other one. Yep, that's good to me too. So I'm just going to use this long socket and extensions to sort of place the bolt in where it needs to be. Yeah. I think that's all we need. So now for the far one, you just got to switch to the little swivel socket. See how it lets me swivel like that? That way I can just get at it at an angle. And again, because the whole engine is lower, I can see it. In fact, you guys can probably see this one. So that's the one that's usually the most difficult, but it's easy as long as you remove your engine mounts. That is the key to making this whole job easy. You know, what I probably should not have done is tighten all of the other bolts. This one might be giving me some trouble because of that. Some trouble starting. Okay, now I got it. I was worried there for a second. Okay, that one's not coming out. And that is all the bolts for the transmission. So now all we have to do is install the slave cylinder, the shift linkage, the drive shaft, and the exhaust, and we're done. So we're gonna need to pull down this little section of the heat shield. There's already like a little cutout for it because that's where our little bushing is gonna install into for the shift linkage. This I'm gonna wait till the very end to install the shift linkage because uh, you know the transmission's facing down right now and you know it's not, uh, it's not up into place. The engine, you know, I got to put the engine back on the engine mounts first. Let's just do that first. By the way, guys, this is how I've been able to jack my car up so high. It's just three pieces of two by four that are nailed together to act as a spacer. And now I need to actually lower the engine back down because this jack cannot reach the engine pan, the engine oil pan in order to uh, lift it up so I can put the engine mounts back in. So unfortunately I lose my all my height that I've gained here and go back to uh, normal height with normal jack stands. So I got the engine mounts back in. It was a little more challenging than I thought it would be but ultimately it was doable. Hopefully you guys won't have to even take the engine mounts off. Um, so I've ran my I, I put the reverse light harness on the other side of the transmission where it needs to be and uh, Let's just plug that in. All right, let's put the slave cylinder up into place. 
If you recall, I've already got some grease on the back of the clutch release fork. No, that was not my first time. Yes, this took a lot of takes. <laughs> but that's how you do it. Why am I doing this the hard way? So now we just connect the clutch line. Just like that. I'm probably gonna put some zip ties between the clutch line and these old transmission wires, as well as the other side where, you know, it hits up against the fuel line. That'll just keep everything in place and it'll keep it off from rattling. Okay, now let's get this shift linkage up in there. Let's not forget this little clip that goes up on this side. Locks the little arm on. Make sure that's up and that's up. So it was this clip just on the front part. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put this on, whichever way it goes. This way, because I want to, um, I want to have the transmission up into place to make it easier to snap this piece in. So, so it's just, it's possible to push the transmission up by hand. It's just not that heavy. So the, uh, my fourth bolt has always been a little different. I think it has a 12 millimeter head. It's not the proper bolt. Um, so I'll just, I'll find another one a little bit later. But for right now, that's gonna keep the transmission up into place. So now it should be a little easier to actually slip this piece up and in there. Okay, so the way this part goes in, there's a little arrow in there that goes up. There's an arrow on the top that points forward. So this little gap has to be in the back on the top. And then you just hook one side up in there and then you can push it up in. It ain't going in there any other way. Found that other bolt. Okay, I'm going to go and test the shifter, make sure it feels all right. All right, guys, we're going to put our new drive shaft up into place. Put it on the back here first. I'm just going to put the center support up and toss the uh, the bolts on by hand just to kind of keep it up in the place. All right, so I've got that up in the place. And I think the 
drive shaft goes there. I think I've lined it up there. We'll pull it back a little bit. That way we can see where the bolts are. Let's turn this around so that these are on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's good. So I'll just get these bolts in, make sure they, they all get started first, and then we'll tighten them in, tighten them down. Can't remember if these were E12s or E10s. I think they're E12s. Yeah, E12s. And I'll display the torque on the screen right here. I'm just gonna bang these in. then I'll pretty much know that I've got them torqued. You know, I can come in, double check these by hand, but actually, now I'm gonna need the whole drive shaft to be installed first. So we'll remove the bolts holding up the center support bearing. That way it can pivot down and we can put the drive shaft up into place. So let me get these bolts back on. Can we sneak up through here? Probably not. Let's try this. Okay, let's put our heat shield back up in place. This heat shield is obviously a little too short, but who cares? It's gonna do its job. Obviously the actual manual heat shield would just extend a little bit further here, but not a big deal. So our other two heat shield bolts are over here in the back. So I've got the exhaust put roughly back into place. I've got it lifted in the back with my floor jack with a piece of wood between the floor jack and the bottom of the exhaust there. Okay, so I got my exhaust gaskets put into place. So now let's just go lift the exhaust up and hook it on. Just get one of those bolts started. There, it ain't coming off. So now I can just get the exhaust, the back of the exhaust put up into place. Eyeball, make sure the mounts are turned the right way. Okay. Thread these on, get them started first, you know. And now we can lower our jack. Now we just have to get these reinforcement plates bolted back up. last one 
which is just like uh, structural reinforcement, I suppose. So we got one more bolt. It's that somewhat difficult one holding that little bracket onto the front of the transmission there. So let's see if we can get it with this. That's good enough for me. So there's one more bracket to go up into place. This is gonna slip over top of here. So let me take these off first. Let's take this off. So this goes over top of that like that. Got one of these on either side. A bolt going through. Let's see, is this around that side? Or is this around this? It was around this side. and wants to grab right there. And there we go. We are all done, man. So let's get some fluid up in this trans. I have no idea if there's anything in there. Wow, somebody made that really tight. So that's the fill plug. And this is the drain plug, obviously. A little bit of something. Okay, so you have to use MTF2 fluid. Pentacin is the uh, OEM fluid. Anyway, fluid transfer pump, which you can get from Harbor Freight for a couple bucks or, you know, wherever. Basically we fill it until it spills out of the fill plug. Okay, there we go. It took, um, I don't know. Yeah, it took about one and a half bottles. These are, uh, these are one liter bottles. So there you go. That's what it took. Go ahead and let's see. I'll put this end in my empty bottle uh, like that, and this end in my full bottle. That's the only problem with these fluid pumps is they get messy. They get really messy. Okay. Nice thing about this, there are no washers. These are tapered plugs, which I think everything should be. You just never have to mess with washers. Never have to replace them. Now we have to fill up the brake reservoir with brake fluid and bleed out the clutch. Okay, we're going to bleed out the clutch now. There is a little rubber nipple covering it. It's a, a seven millimeter wrench. Slip that on. Open it up. I'm not sure if I want to use the box end there. Okay. So I've got my brake bleeder bottle here. You can just use a piece of tubing connected to an old soda bottle. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll pump the clutch pedal and we'll bleed the, uh, we'll bleed the air out. So I can hear that air. Now I can see the fluid. I just got my head sticking down. 
Okay, looks like we got those air bubbles out. Here, let me see if I can just kind of turn it by hand, get it sort of tight so that it won't drip on me. Yeah, I think that's good. Now we can just tighten it up with the wrench. Perfect, done. Don't forget to replace that little rubber nipple. So we're done bleeding out the clutch. So now all we have to do is get this stuff in place, which I believe goes, does that go this way? This way, or this way. Yeah, it goes that way because that's where the little things sit in. Okay. It sits underneath there. And underneath there, right? Because this is going to sit like that. Like that, once we put this back in. So we'll just get our switches connected back into place. Let's see. Oh, this is backwards. Okay. One there and one there. Our shift knob just goes straight down on. There we go. This is the wrong shift knob, I think. It's got the wrong shift pattern on it. This is the one that I took. Unless I'm, oh, oh okay, no, I'm wrong. <laughs> I, for this whole time, I was thinking that reverse was down below fifth was down there but actually that makes sense now because the whole the reason that there are two different pins you know there's one pin way over there and one pin here so in my shift pin bushing video i wasn't even going all the way far to the to the left enough to see if that's the one that was sticking so eh, go figure Okay, so I would like to modify this plate so we can get it back in. You can see there's a little cutout or a little, a little outline of where you're supposed to cut it out. But I think that's kind of all you get really. So I'm gonna try my best to sort of follow those lines. Anyway, I'm gonna do basically that and just keep slicing it down, slicing down and seeing if I can uh, get that out of there. Bye. So that was taking forever, so I've decided to use my jigsaw. So that's got it most of the way there. I'll just do the rest by hand. Good enough. Okay, I got that plate in down here, so we should be all done. Let's go start it up. Oh, nice. First time, every time. Okay, let's try first. Oh yeah, the black the back wheels are moving. Second. Yeah, they're moving. Pretty awesome. Let's try reverse. Hopefully this will go without gas, yeah. Yeah. Reverse works. Awesome. 
So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I think I'll do a first drive in the uh, next video and uh, just give you my sort of impressions about what the car feels like now. And then we'll probably definitely do like a, uh, you know, like a what the costs were video on this, just in case you guys want to know that information. Um, and then anything else, I don't know, we'll see from there. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you want to. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.